I'd like to bring the uh, workshop for uh, April 11th to order. Do we need to do the pledge again? No? Okay. Uh, let me just read through here. The commission meeting will be held uh, administrative. We ask that people attend the meeting to remember the administrative uh, building campus is tobacco free, only bottled water, soda. No food is allowed in the auditorium where the meeting will be held. Uh, members of the public uh, are welcome to attend to observe the workshop, but may not be given the opportunity, uh, may be given the opportunity by the chair to participate in the given testimony. All right, so uh, plan is on a commission may by motion uh, recess into executive session to receive legal advice from the board's attorney in, on any item contained in the agenda pursuant to ARS 38-431.03A3, workshop agenda. <clears throat> Who would like to start? Mr. Taylor? Uh, Chairman uh, Fluche, uh, members of the commission, I guess I should, uh, maybe I would start by just summarizing the uh, role of the commission, Planning and Zoning Commission, its, its functions regarding various land use uh, functions, and then maybe we can uh, just go from there into answering questions and, and some discussion. The, the Planning and Zoning Commission is established pursuant to ARS 1102 as an advisory uh, commission to the Board of Supervisors. Its purpose is to promote the public health, safety, welfare, and convenience by advising the Board of Supervisors on matters relating to uh, the general plan, uh, zoning, uh, subdivision planning, rule, and other rules and regulations uh, and ordinances applying to the development of land in Mojave County. The Commission's focus is, focus is limited to land use issues and planning and uh, such as planning and development. Its uh, action is limited to an advisory capacity. It acts only in an advisory capacity. In that capacity as an advisory board, it does uh, assist the Board of Supervisors in performing both legislative actions and um, administrative actions. By legislative actions, I mean uh, when you enact uh, a policy or you change an existing policy. Administrative action generally refers to the execution or implementation of existing policy. The uh, board's legislative uh, functions uh, generally arise with respect to the general plan and amendments thereto and uh, zoning, the zoning ordinance and amendments thereto. Under 11804, uh, the Commission is instrumental in formulating and recommending the general plan and in adopting amendments to the general plan. The purpose of the general plan is to guide and coordinate the development of the county. Uh, the general plan contains policy directives, goals, implementation measures, uh, land use uh, designations for certain areas that are directed at promoting uh, the health, safety, and welfare of the public. And those uh, different elements of the general plan are being weighed and considered uh, by the commission in recommending uh, land use regulation to the Board of Supervisors. An amendment to the general plan involves um, balancing uh, goals and policies that sometimes may be conflicting. And in that sense, it, it's, an, it's a legislative function. The board, uh, the, the commission, weighs and balances and considers those, uh, uh, com those goals and policies and directives and based on that makes a recommendation to the Board of Supervisors and this is involved when we're considering an amendment to the general plan. The ultimate authority for uh, accepting or rejecting those, re those recommendations or uh, changing them somewhat rests with the Board of Supervisors. It's the legislative authority. For, for uh, the zoning ordinance, uh, the commission uh, has functions under ARS 1114 um, for becoming involved in the process of rezoning property. Uh, as with uh, a change uh, to an amendment to the general plan, a, uh, a rezoning of a property uh, requires a citizen participation process uh, so that public in input can be put, uh, uh, landowners, neighbors, and any interested landowner in the county would uh, be able to uh, have some input in 
uh, for the commission to consider in, in connection with its recommendation to the board. The input should be related to land use and should be relevant to the to the impact that the proposed rezoning of the property will have will have on the goals and policies of the general plan and on the general health and well-being of the of the county. And again, in this, uh, as with the general plan amendments, um, it, it, ca it calls for uh, sometimes weighing and balancing conflicting uh, goals and policies and is therefore legislative in action. And the, this commission's role is limited to uh, an advisory role. You weigh and balance and consider and deliver a report to the Board of Supervisors as to how you feel the uh, proposed change in zoning um, how, how it complies or, or advances elements in the general plan. There are certain actions by the um, uh, commission that are uh, clearly administrative in nature. We saw one of them today um, in, in a couple of examples where uh, the commission considered an application for uh, the approval of an RV park plan. In that case, there is no change in land use designation, no change in general policy that's being applied. It's just a, uh, a review by this commission as to whether or not the technical requirements of an RV park plan approval, uh, RV park plan application have been complied with. There's no change in, in uh, land use designation, no change in zoning, no legislative action involved. The commission's, uh, again, is only acting in an advisory capacity in that respect, but it's, and its function is uh, the, the, the types of issues that it can weigh and consider are more limited. It's much like a, um, a subdivision review process. That again is an, an administrative action. Uh, if a subdivision uh, does not call for a rezoning of the property or any change in the underlying land use regulation, uh, then it's, it's clearly an administrative function. This commission's role in the subdivision review process is to see that the land division regulations, the design criteria, the construction criteria, uh, access issues, things like that that are required under the uh, subdivision regulation have been complied with by the applicant. You, you could not consider things like whether or not a subdivision is right for the area. You know, if the zoning classification applies issues, the general policy issues as to whether or not it's right for the area or, you know, you know neighbors don't like this, wouldn't, don't want a subdivision in their area, things like that don't apply. You know, if, if it fits with the criteria, with the design criteria, uh, an RV park plan, a, a manufactured home plan, a subdivision, Approval, approval of a subdivision plan, all that action is, is administrative. Does it comply with the ordinance? Is there a requisite uh, access, public utilities? Uh, is there assur are there assurances in place? You know, just in, uh, issues like that. And if that is the case, then neither the um, commission nor the, the commission doesn't have authority. To, uh, it can make a recommendation that it, that it uh, not be approved, but the Board of Supervisors doesn't have the authority to reject a, a subdivision uh, plan. And I would, I would urge, too, that in the, in the example that we saw today, that if a, um, an RV park, approval for an RV park plan satisfies the technical requirements of the, um, uh, of the zoning ordinance, then there's uh, sta neither staff nor the commission nor the Board of Supervisors has the authority to reject that um, that sort of uh, uh, application. Now, a gray area between administrative and uh, legislative action comes into play sometimes with zoning use permits. G generally, a zoning use permit provides a process for uh, where you can place conditions and, and things like that that you feel uh, are um, uh, necessary in order to protect the health, safety, and welfare. If, the, if a review for a zoning use permit uh, satisfies all the technical requirements, yet leaves some discretion for the commission to recommend a, recommend other sorts of conditions, you know, such as time limit conditions and things like that. Then you, you start to stray into an area that could generally be considered legislative. And again, the commission's role in that process is advisory. You can recommend conditions and such, send it up to the board, and the board has the ultimate uh, authority to determine which recommendations it will accept or and perhaps 
add uh, add conditions on its own. Um, Is this a good place to butt in? Yeah, sure. <laughs> what about water? Are we to consider anything to do with water or pollution? Well, the the general plan, the requirements under 11, uh, 804 of uh, ARS 11804 has certain, it, it, in the first instance, it provides fairly broad authority to uh, the uh, county, including the, 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 the commission and its recommendations and the Board of Supervisors and its adoption to consider the impact that land regulation will have on the general health, safety, and welfare of the, um, of the community. And it's a fairly broad statement of authority. In my view, that um, does enable the, both the commission and, uh, and the Board of Supervisors to consider the impact that a land division regulation will have upon water, the quality of water, the supply of water, and upon other environmental ele elements, natural resources, air, things like that. I mean, that's all in 11804. You don't have authority, the county does not have authority, we're not in an active management area to uh, regulate water. You know, you can't impose a rule saying you can only use so much water that uh, generally outside of an active management area, a, a landowner can um, use as much water that it can pump uh, out of the ground for beneficial use. It just can't, I mean, be, an argument can be made that it just can't waste water or transfer water out of the base and things like that. But the, the commission and the board of supervisors, I do believe, have, has authority. If a person comes in and requests a change in land use, uh, would have the authority to consider the impact that that change in land use would have on natural resources, air, water, um, forestry, things like that, would have the, have the authority to consider that. Um, under the, the uh, uh, enabling statute for the, for the general plan, a county is required to have a water uh, use element. You know, to, uh, it's required to uh, uh, project how uh, development of the land, project what impact that will have on water supply, and if there's insufficient water supply to have some sort of element uh, uh, in the general plan to show where water, where the, the water may come from. It still doesn't give the county authority to regulate the use of water. And it, it's sort of a, uh, you know, it, it's, it's like an unfunded mandate. The county, uh, it, the, the enabling statute says this is not required in the counties to do aquifer studies and things like that, but it, it does require you to have a water use element in your general plan. The way that we've, in, in uh, modifying the general plan this year, the way that, or last year, the way that that has been dealt with is the county recognizes that it doesn't have a hydrologist on staff and that there are probably not many people in the county that are, have the expertise to, you know, to, to make, you know, a completely sound decision regarding land use and water uh, supply. So the county is directed under the general plan to rely on the data and expertise that's provided by the uh, Arizona Department of Water Resources. So, you know, you know we, we turn the, man the water management and the, the, we look to them for the data and the management capabilities. But you do have the authority to consider the impact of a change, of a proposed change in land use on water. Uh, <clears throat> Bob, I just kind of a little history lesson here going back. Uh, if we cannot, uh, include in our decision the amount of water that they're going to use. For and I, what, <clears throat> what I'm thinking is is the uh, uh, Wallapai Solar Project. Uh, just trying to make a distinction here. Uh, the commission approved it. The board of supervisors approved it. They had a water allocation from uh, DWR for whatever it was, 43 or 4,500 acre feet. Uh, and then somebody went to the Corporation Commission and killed the whole thing. So no matter what we do, there's still another elected body that tells people what they're doing for, for projects. That, that's correct. There's the, so the, the ultimate how, authority. How is it that we can't make a determination on water but they can. The uh, Arizona Corporation Commission is part of its line siding committee and its 
Protective Study Committee uh, uses uh, the uh, Arizona Department of Water Resources as, as one of its participating entities. And it, can, it has more authority, more direct authority under state statute to say, if you're using this much water, you can't, the project can't go forward. I, I understand yeah. that. But the, the project was approved because they had enough water. But the Corporation Commission said, no, you can't use groundwater. You've got to get the water somewhere else. I know there was stuff going on with affluent. And, and, and I'm, I'm thinking about other things that could happen down the road. And that's kind of why I'm even bringing this up. So uh, they had, that's what I don't understand. They had the water allocation from DWR. And I'm just trying to figure out exactly how is it if you have that water allocation, we're not supposed to take it into consideration, but they did, and then they reverse everything that the county did and what the Board of Supervisors did. And if <clears throat> my question is, is if that's if that's the general way things are gonna go, then you know, it's kind of important that we know that. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Bob, uh, I know that you know when we had the general plan review or uh, you know just uh, revised whatever we can call it uh, there was a big argument about the water and the air you know air quality because you know both in the 2005 general plan was says that you know Mojave County shall regulate uh, you know water and shall regulate the air which we corrected it and we said that you know shall be done by the state you know and and I think that's one of the misunderstandings that I see, as uh, Chairman Flushim uh, stated, about, you know, the authority of the county on the water. And I know that, you know, everybody refers to the safety and welfare, but yet uh, it seems that, you know, our hands are kind of tight because every time that you have a subdivision, we don't come to the county for the water, we go to the water district. Like in my area of Fort Mojave, I go to NBIDD, I get the water allocation, I go uh, to ADWR, and then I'm going to come and see Sylvia. So, you know, that's basically the pattern that we have there. So it seems like, you know, uh, somehow we need to be, we need to define, uh, the way I look at it, uh, this safety and welfare, uh, you know, of the community. Because not only on the uh, water, not only on the thing, on the air, but they're using that language anytime that they want to have the county get involved in the process. They said, yeah, but we have this. Well, uh, where that, uh, the commission and the board's authority is defined with respect to health, safety, and welfare is in the general plan. Right. We have elements in the general plan. Now, but that, that's the guideline. I realize health, safety, and welfare are fairly broad concepts. Just about anything you can say could apply to that. Right. The general plan is the guidebook that determines how, you know, those things that can help advance health, safety, and welfare, like job creation, protection of the environment, uh, protection against overdensity in certain areas, you know, provision of adequate infrastructure, all those uh, things that uh, that affect health, safety, and welfare with respect to land use regulations, that. If you're looking for the definition of the broad concept, that is in the general plan. And, and that's, I mean, that's why we developed the general plan to use as a guide, guide book uh, if for you in making the recommendation and for the Board of Supervisors in deciding whether to adopt the regulation. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure. Uh, to, to clarify, uh -huh. I guess, a, an issue that uh, Mr. Fluche arose. The Arizona Corporation Commission did not negate the land use regulation, that same land use regulation that allows them to, uh, uh, to construct a solar facility still applies. They don't have authority over the county with respect to land use regulation, but they do have deeper and broader authority with respect to regulation of water and how, you know, the, the, uh, with, the with respect to the Corporation Commission, how the uh, establishment of certain industries uh, affects the environment. They have a, a lot more authority there. But as far as the land use regulation goes, I mean, that, the, co the commission and the board, uh, their action has not been negated. Uh, it's, it's still a, a land use regulation. So let's, let's continue talking about the Wallapai because that's a good example of, of 
of a heavy industry that could come to Lake Havasu City. That one there, they had, it was a previously a uh, residential subdivision that we approved. And that's why they went to, to uh, DWR. I guess my question is, is if, if, if a, a, a two miles away from that project, someone came in and said, we want to do uh, the same thing, okay? Do they really have to go A to DWR to get uh, a water allocation? I don't think they do for manufacturing, industrial, or heavy use. I think that's really for uh, public reports and for uh, residential subdivisions. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, and uh, in Mojave County, at least, uh, DWR is the only entity that has the authority to provide that. You know, you, there is authority under the um, uh, under Title 11 uh, with respect to the counties. Now, even outside of active management areas, where upon a unanimous decision by the Board of Supervisors, you can uh, require you know a showing of adequate water supply or something like that in connection with the. Uh, approval of a subdivision. But right now, basically, it just, uh, out, since that's not been adopted by the county and we're outside of an active management area, they need to, uh, the, a subdivider needs to go to DWR and get the, um, uh, uh, for its public report, and get the assurance of adequate water. Right, and it's, uh, I guess my point is, is that if it's residential, they gotta go there. But if it's not residential, non-residential land use, zoning, then they really don't have to go to DWR. That's that's correct. Not for the uh, for the approval of the placement of a certain industry in an area, they have to go through the corporation commission and the, and the corporation commission. And you know, again, I uh, I'm not going to challenge their authority. They pull in entities such as uh, uh, the EPA and DWR and stuff like that, and consider what impact that uh, industry will have on that. And, on and, and I also resources. understand if they're you just can't drill a well if you're within a water service area too. So that, right. that and I'm primarily thinking of things that are outside of those. And I think regardless of the, pro uh, the project ADEQ and if there is any industry, you have EPA pretty much, you know. Well, depending upon the project, I mean, that <coughs> in there they had to get an EIS, they had to go through the NEPA process, all that stuff had to be done. but they didn't get that far into the process because Arizona Corporation Commission said you can't use groundwater. So that's that's when everything stopped. And then they couldn't get finance and then they couldn't get the PPA. I'm just saying it's a snowball effect when something like this happens. But they so, still have the land use designation if they could work something out with that the doesn't do, It, it doesn't do commerce any good to have a yeah. land use if you can't get water. No water, no development. I don't care if it's residential or industrial. It's just the way it is. So I'm, I understand, I just was trying to figure out why, how we got trumped on stuff like that, so. Um, Wait, I have a really simple question. You guys are way too complex for me. Um, water or pollution, if it's a general plan amendment, we can talk about it. If it's a zoning use permit, we can get even more um, in depth well, if it's a, a, a change in zoning or a, a zoning use permit where the impact on water, or potential impact on water would be uh, relevant, what you would do is you would look at the general plan and what, it, what its directive is. And I believe the way that our general plan now directs is that we will rely upon the resources, the reports and the data and stuff like that that's available from ADWR. Uh, we won't presume to know ourselves without an expert on staff, you know, what impact uh, it might have. Well, I know we haven't done much lately, but when I first came on, it seemed like everybody had a water issue. And that, that seems to have dried up because I, I was under the impression, and I still am, that we really can't control what happens with water. That's somebody else. That, so. that is correct. You can't control what happens with water. You can control what happens on the ground above the water. Right. Okay, thanks. Which, which, as I said, you know, I think in the journal plan, it was uh, in 2005 at least that I know of, it was saying that, you know, we shall regulate the air quality yeah. and we shall regulate the water and we had no authority to do so. 
See, the, the general plan and the, the, the elements of the general plan that deal with water and things like that was enacted under the Growing Smart legislation. And it sounds like a good idea, but they don't, it says you'll have this water use source element, yet there's an over, overseeing body that has the ultimate authority over the, over the use of water, and there is nothing in, from the state that gives counties outside of an active management area the resources to make a sound judgment on, on what will happen, you know, with respect to groundwater with a land, after a land use change. Uh, Bob, uh, I know that, you know, right now everything is kind of quiet because there is no economy around us. But as soon as, you know, things start to loosen up, I'm sure there are going to be a lot of applications for projects. And I'm sure that, you know, we're going to have the same problem as soon as they want to put the industry down in the project. They're going to come before us and say, hey, you know, water, water, you're going to pollute the water, you're going to use the water, you're going to abuse the water. So I think it is very important for us, the commissioners, to understand uh, about, you know, this, uh, you know, the fine line that we have in terms of, like, you know, uh, uh, approving it, I mean, recommending it to the Board of Supervisors in a positive way or negative way. And it seems the way I look at it, uh, if the project is viable, and there is no uh, problem with the surrounding pr uh, properties and it's within the guideline of the land use ordinance, uh, we should not uh, try to instigate about the water and just let that be handled by the state. Is that a good evaluation or? And that's the general direction that we get from the general plan now, that you know, water is important to health, safety, and welfare and stuff, but we lack the in-house expertise and, and, and the ultimate regulatory authority uh, to actually do anything, uh, you know, that, do anything that, that makes sense with respect to water, you know, you can, so, you know, I guess the approach under the general, uh, under, under the direction of the general plan would be, okay, cons you can consider um, the way and balance all the impacts that it has on health, safety, and welfare, you know, the development of industry, the, the diversification of industry and development of jobs, uh, things like that. And then, you know, among those elements is the impact on the environment, the impact on the water supply, and rely on the applicant to show that they've satisfied whatever concerns the state regulatory agency has in that respect. Well, that's a little bit more, uh, be more specific about this. Uh, the concern that you hear all the time is we don't have enough water. We don't have enough water. We are just, you know, we don't have enough water. Well, we don't know how much water is there because we don't have any uh, data to support anything. So basically, again, as you suggested, I think it is uh, the applicant has to go to those uh, authorities, which I think would be on the state level, to provide that kind of a support, the way I look at it. And uh, uh, I don't think we have, we cannot make that indication and the staff cannot give us any indication, is there enough water or not? Yes, we, we, don't, we simply don't have the resources here. That, that's an, a, that would be a very expensive uh, agency for us to try to set up as a county. That's a developer cost. Yeah. That's a developer cost. Um, How can we get around? Remember the Albiasa, it, there was already gonna be a city and they had 84,000 acre feet of water a day or whatever, and, and then Albiasa wanted to use a little, and we had everybody come in from the big sandy area complaining about water use. Was there anything that we could do or anything we can do in the future at the county level so that we have better information? Because remember, we really didn't know, I mean, we knew what, the, yeah. what was going on, but it, it didn't seem to get out to anybody quick enough. Well, uh, could we get better information? Is that easy to attain from you guys to us? Well, I think that, in, like in that example, uh, you should rely on the applicant since they have to go through the, you know, for, for, for an industry like that that they were going to bring in, they are ultimately going to have to deal with the ADWR, have them, uh, you know, incur that cost and provide that data. And, uh, you know, that, and that's sort of illustrative, too, of how, uh, you know, you get sort of caught in a situation. When you're considering a change in land use, would it be... Um, reasonable for you to say well, you're not you're okay you're designated as a subdivision now and you can use so many hundreds of thousands of acre feet of water and stuff now you're going to drop down to 4,000 acre feet and we're not going to allow that land use change because of your use of water that I mean that might be perceived as a unreasonable um, 
reason for denying the change in land use. Well, I think part of the problem with that that I saw was the people from the Big Sandy didn't believe them. And so all we had was the developers saying, gee, we're hardly going to use any water at all, and all these other people saying their wells were going to sink so low that they, the pumps wouldn't work anymore. And I don't know, I see, and I, that's, that's part of the water thing. If we can't do much about water, that's okay. But I don't know, it'd be nice to be, when the people come in to be able to say, you know, you're wrong and this is why. Or that you're, you're not providing sufficient data to show us that this land use is going to harm the water supply. So that's back on the developer. Yeah, right, yeah. Okay. Um, on the front page of uh, your uh, little cheat sheet you got there, um, I noticed under uh, the zoning ordinance, and you don't mention it up in the general plan, I'm just curious, we mentioned the citizen uh, participation process. Uh, is that only required if you're rezoning? And is that, uh, or if you're coming in for a general plan, a major or a minor amendment, and a rezone, uh, at what point and how many citizen, I mean, participation meetings are going to be required for a major amendment or a minor amendment or general plan? Do we have that wrote down somewhere or is it generally, I know the commission generally says, well, we want you to have two or one or three or... Well, the, the, the citizen participation plan and the opportunity for input from the public is required both with respect to general plan amendment and a zoning. It's, it's a, basically your, the state statute says that you will have a, a plan, you know, to provide an opportunity for any interested re resident of any interested, um, it's fairly broad, it's just not neighbors, n uh, neighboring landowners and any interested uh, party to express it, uh, their opinion. That's required under both the general plan amendment and a um, uh, zoning, uh, change in zoning ordinance. We have uh, notice provisions also that are required under statute and uh, citizen participation plan elements under the general plan as they apply to an amendment to the general plan and we have the same thing under uh, change in zoning ordinance. But um, does that re... Uh, okay. Th there's nothing that says... Major you amendment get, or general amendment, they're both the same. That's what Well, major and minor, you know, major amendments, well, on any amendment to the general plan, uh, my, there, you know, there are restrictions under the uh, zoning ordinance and under the state statute as to how many times you can do a major amendment and when it has to apply and what, how you do, you, you're required to define a major amendment and a minor amendment, things like that. But the citizen participation plan is required, from, uh, is required for any amendment. Okay. Uh, then let me ask Nick, where in our uh, general plan and ordinances do we, do we somewhat suggest or dictate how many of these, because this paragraph goes on quite a bit about everybody's concerns, da 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 da. I'm just wondering where, where can they get that information off the county's website uh, about how many participation meetings they need for a general plan or for a, for a, uh, a minor amendment and a major, a, a major and a minor amendment to the general plan. And I guess the supplemental question of that is, if there's an existing area plan, like um, uh, oh, where would it be, uh, Golden Valley area plan, okay, they've got their own area plan. So if someone wants to go and put a power plant in there, that would be a minor amendment if they're using under 1,200 acres, is that right, or 1,640? There is a distinction in acreage between a major and a minor <coughs> amendment. Mr. Each. Chairman, the, the general plan defines the uh, <coughs> size of the uh, uh, development where it goes into a major amendment. And uh, <coughs> also the general plan gives the uh, Board of Supervisors the option to uh, classify any amendment as a minor amendment if they wish to. Okay. So... Um, Okay. How many, currently, how many acres do we have that has to be, if it's over so many acres, it's got to be a major amendment, period. If it's under that amount, you can do a minor amendment. Chris? Yeah, that's true, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking up now to see what the actual acreage is, but the director is right 
particularly with uh, renewable energy resources. You know, it, there, there can be determinations made that something that's even over the acreage limit is indeed a minor amendment. Also, there is a, a, a kind of a, uh, a feature where, and I think th this was a result of Castle Arch a couple of, uh, several years right. ago, where they were actually mind. moving around a lot of area um, or the, the movements they were making and where certain land designations were covered a lot of area, but it really wasn't affecting the overall plan. The overall plan was pretty much staying the same. Um, and it, it, there were some issues about having them come back and do a major amendment on something that was just really a, a minor, ended up being a minor shifting of the land uses and where they occurred. So at that point in time, we, we also said that if the Board of Supervisors Step decides up. that the overall uh, changes won't affect the, the, the balance of land uses in the general plan uh, for that area, then the Board could go ahead and approve it. Um, so the Director's right. There's, there's some kind of like escape clauses in those absolutes uh, where uh, that provide the discretion to the Board where they just don't, um, it, it's just kind of their call. Uh, well, it's their call, and, and it's for those specifics where, you know, really a, a major amendment doesn't make sense um, because of, of how the land uses are. Well, I, I, I'm thinking about, and I'm not thinking just energy, I'm thinking about industry. So <clears throat> that's going to create some jobs and all that kind of stuff. I'm just trying to figure out at, at uh, is it? 200 acres, they need to be prepared to do that and hold public meetings or, uh, I, I, I remember that we certainly discussed at length years ago about what is, how many acres is a minor amendment and how many acres, actually I think it was, how many acres does a project become a major amendment? And I, I thought it was either 12 or 1,800 acres or something. I think it was 1,800 was dropped to 1,200, but we need to check that. Yeah, yeah it was um, it was originally uh, 600 acres for urban areas and uh, 1,200 acres for uh, rural rural areas. Suburban and, and urban were, were Okay, so we I just couldn't remember what it was. So it's 1,200 acres, is that what it was? No, that was actually changed in 2010. Okay. And I think now it actually is closer to 1,800. I, I right. just passed pa past the goal that has that in it. I'm just trying to get a better handle on the, the process that we that we have or we try to go by. Anybody else got any uh, things they'd like to talk about? Never to be a person without words. Today, when we had the refuge, the anti-refuge people, I don't think any of us had anything to say to them because anything we would have said would have sounded like an argument instead of a question. And I don't know, coming to you guys for guidance, is there, is there any hope for that or is that just something we live with? Well, as you saw today, there's going to be people that approve of a project and, and you know, really feel strongly about it and people that feel strongly against it. I mean, you're, you're not, any a position that you take that is inconsistent with the position, position that a person that opposes a project uh, has will be perceived as adversarial, I guess. You know? Well, most of the people that spoke didn't necessarily speak land use. It was personal issues. Emotional. You know, I have a contract with them, which had nothing to do with, with what we were to approve or to deny today. And I don't know, you know, maybe there's something that the commissioner, the chairman can, can read out loud that we have no, we can't help your morals. You know, but I don't, I, it seems to be, every time there's a, a the, Another one was the Big Sandy. All those people complained about their wells. These people here saying it's going to lower their values. And we really don't want to argue with them. But I don't know if there's a, a better way we can 
that they can understand what our job is. And I don't know how to get that through because that's what the little argument was over the, the uh, call to the public. Yeah, just keep the Every attorney. one of those people that spoke about call to the public said they want to talk about anything they want to talk about. Just keep the attorneys out of the meeting. Just I have found <laughs> that sometimes the less you say is the best. Yep. And if you think it's going to uh, create some havoc or uh, indigestion by anybody, then that's your call. I mean, as a commissioner, you can ask anybody any question that comes up to the podium. But if you think it's going to incite a riot, I probably wouldn't recommend to do that. But that's that's the way I handle. It. I just keep it simple and and. Uh, the less you say, sometimes uh, less is more. Well, I, I really believe that people don't understand what we do. Or the one gentleman that I said, there's all this county staff that's more than willing to help them, they don't go there. And they really believe they need to come to us to vent, not to go somewhere else and find an answer. And I don't know, I mean, now what I'd, I'd come back to you guys to, to how to help the public. I mean, maybe you can't, you know, maybe, that, maybe that's the correct answer is we can't help stupid. But uh, it just seems that, you know, with the, a lot of the people that come before us, they really don't understand what what our duty is, well, and they uh, really don't care. Probably. Well, Joe, you notice that you know the gentleman who is running as a super, for the supervisor position is still referring to us as the governing body. I mean, That's you true. know, when you have somebody uh, who wants to become a supervisor, uh, does not have the knowledge of the commission. You know, what ex what, do you, what else? What do you expect from the others? I guess the best thing to do is to, like you did today, try to explain what your role is, you know, so that they'll understand your decision. You, you allow people to, uh, to have their say. A lot of what was said today was not really uh, relevant to what, uh, what the, you know, what decision you had to make, you know. Uh, you know, it, more, it was more directed at zoning the property and things like that. But, you know, explain to them what your role is, and this is, these are the issues that you look at, and, that, you know, these are what you'll make your... Um, recommendation to the board or yeah. they'll probably they'll the same people will probably uh, show up at the Board of Supervisors and have the opportunity to provide their input there too yeah I agree it's Carl's fault <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa I just want to give everybody a, their two minutes of fame and, and uh, if, if we didn't do that <clears throat> we'd all be on the front page of the paper <laughs> it still will be it still will be right I'm not gonna read the paper so I don't care yeah, we don't get this paper. Most of us, some of us, don't live on this side of the hill. Yeah, once in a while someone emails me something, but other than that. Mr. Chairman, may I, may I just respond to uh, Commissioner Morbido a couple Absolutely. of things? Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for sending you know, complaints back to us because uh, we, that's what we are all about. And, and I really mean that uh, our number one uh, focus is uh, being at service. So our focus is on anybody that comes in there gets an answer. Uh, and uh, they do. And we have a, uh, a, a survey going on where we ask people to fill out a survey sheet on their satisfaction. And, you know, 99% gives us the highest rate on that. So we are very proud of that. And uh, <clears throat> there is always this 1% that doesn't get the answer what they want to get, but they get an answer. And, uh, you know, like uh, today, it upset me that there was some accusation on a uh, home occupation permit, yeah. for example. <laughs> it has nothing, to do, that too. Too, but there's nothing to do with the commission, but, uh, you know, it has something to do with Arizona law and regulations, and we cannot change that. But uh, <clears throat> that, uh, that person didn't get the right answer, but, you know, we, we have to live with um, the law and our, our ordinances. The, the other issue uh, uh, that I wanted to, to address is uh, you brought up two issues. One is the, uh, the refuge and the Big Sandy. What could you do better? And, and um, like on the refuge issue, uh, that's why we wrote a memo this time, both myself and, um, and um, Bob Taylor for the attorney. And that really was a lot of help. That, uh, yeah. that basically we tried to clarify the issue, that the issue was the zoning. If somebody has a zoning, that's the land use, and then can have a reasonable expectation to use that property for whatever it's zoned for. Um, on, on Big Sandy, you know, the water uh, was the issue, and so if if you want, want to ask us uh, what 
is the regulation, what is the laws that govern that issue, that, that may be something that we can help you. Like Big Sandy, we could, could have pointed out what we just discussed here, that um, the uh, ADWR is in charge of regulating uh, groundwater in Arizona. And uh, <coughs> other issue is that how much water is there that uh, we just don't know. And uh, you, can, uh, you can do studies, but those studies are very expensive. And so if, if you want to direct questions to us, uh, we're more than happy to answer those. That may, may put them back in the, uh, um, you know, what are the regulations that we, we can consider, staff can consider, and, and the commission can consider. That's good, you know, and I'm, I'm probably the most guilty on this whole board of not coming to you guys enough when there's somebody up there asking a question. But thank you, I, I'll, I'll, do, I'll bug you guys more. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, Director Hunt, um, <coughs> one of the things that we heard today was, uh, you know, the a ability of the people to bring up ideas or suggestions on the zoning ordinance. Uh, what do we have available for those who want to make a recommendation? Is there a, you know, uh, suggestion box or in on the website or what exactly what do we have that they can make those suggestions to the staff because you know obviously they want to just bypass everybody and get up to the upstairs as they call it yeah uh, commissioners army and and anybody can do that they can go to their supervisors and <clears throat> they they certainly approach us and that's the procedure right now that uh, if an issue comes up with the zoning ordinance if we notice it we staff notice it we bring it back to you for a text amendment, and we do it quite often. Now, if the public wants to change something, then uh, they uh, need to bring it to their supervisors. Right now, that's the procedure, and then they ask us, and then, then we put it on the agenda. We're working also on a procedure. It's a very good question, and, and uh, thank you for bringing it up. We're working on a procedure right now that we want to bring to you for approval uh, that there's a petition process. If somebody wants to change the zoning ordinance, for example, then they would have to go through a petition, you know, collect signatures, they have enough support for that, and if they meet a certain uh, threshold, then we would bring it to the commission for consideration. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, elaborate a little bit more on that. What, what's, what is that gonna include? Well, we don't, we don't have a procedure yet, and, and we, or a policy and procedure, rather, uh, but uh, that's the direction we are thinking that say if there's something obviously wrong in our zoning ordinance and then it's a big issue for a lot of people then they can collect a number of signatures and file a petition and then we would set a threshold that if they meet that uh, threshold then that's a big enough problem that we'll have to bring it in front of the commission and uh, for consideration uh, is that something that's been done in other jurisdictions uh, it's I don't know about other jurisdiction, but we have similar procedures for, um, for other uh, committees that we have, not commissions, but committees. They have a certain procedure where, say, I'm coming from Public Works, they have a procedure if they want to get a road into the uh, county road maintenance program, then they have to collect like 30 signatures, and then it becomes an issue that will be brought in front of the Board of Supervisors. So I was thinking about similarly, if they have an issue with something, then they would, uh, would, would have a pet petition process that they could petition the commission and the board, yeah. uh, but meeting, meeting a certain threshold. It's not just one person who didn't get his permit and he's upset with the world, but it would be uh, most of a common good. Yeah. Uh, Director Hunt, uh, all do, with all due respect, in terms of the petition, one thing I've experience so far, and we did that with the animal ordinance, they threw a whole bunch of lies out there to get those signatures. And you know, I know that uh, firsthand, uh, some of the things that was said out there was totally untrue, and yet, you know, th they were doing that to get that signature on the petition, and then, you know, you saw the end result. So uh, I'm thinking that, you know, uh, my suggestion is at least to have uh, some advisory committee or somebody to review those petition or the comments that is there, and if it's viable, then you know, filter those through the system. Because otherwise, uh, the way I look at it, you know, it's going to be a lot of work for the staff, and it's going to be. Uh, uh, you could see that today. 
you know, the, some of the suggestions that they have and comments that they have is just uh, off the wall. Yeah, I, I totally agree. If we, if, if we develop a policy and procedure for a petition, it, it has to be a proper uh, procedure where the uh, petition is actually factful and uh, addresses a, a certain issue and it's related to the ordinance, nothing else. Yeah, I would, I would uh, think about it, think about it some more, and then think about it again. <laughs> Because I can think of five people that will start bringing up petitions right now. <laughs> I, you know, they just make up stories. Yeah. Right? Yeah, they get Chris. the signature. Yeah. Real briefly, found that the question was um, the size of the acreage for uh, major amendments to the general plan. 1,800 for suburban and urban other than uh, um, uh, renewable energy projects. 3,800 in the rural other than that. And if I can kind of put my two cents in on the changes of the zoning ordinance, I think one of the biggest tests that has to be made um, as far as you know, the county bringing forward and championing a change to the ordinance is that whoever's requesting it has to demonstrate to both this body and to the board that the issue involved and the solution uh, are of greater importance than just a very small minority or just a few people, or as Nick said, just somebody who didn't get their permit. And that's probably one of the mo most onerous tests that yeah, it's something like that, that. Has, to, has to go through. Okay. All done? Um, to make a motion to adjourn on that. Any questions anywhere? Definitely. Kevin, I see you. <laughs> um, all right, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the workshop. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion to adjourn. Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you all for coming today and the, sharing your day. The helicopter is waiting for us, I guess, right? That's right. Can Thank I get you. a ride home? <laughs> I want to do some sightseeing on the way, though. Uh -oh. <laughs>